Welcome to new TechView podcast and this time around I want to ask you the question is it possible to video edit on a tablet and for this case I have my MatePad Pro of course and I want to guide you through the possibilities on tablet editing and video editing in particular because it is possible without any doubt because in our smartphones and in our tablets there exist the most powerful chips for video creation ever because of course those devices are video creation devices with our smartphone cameras and of course also video playback devices with the screen and the various different streaming platforms that we have nowadays so they are very powerful and very optimized for video playback and video creation recording of video data so the system on the chip on the arm chip is optimized the gpu is optimized for encoding and decoding audio and video codecs so this helps a lot when it comes to also video editing on the tablet and this is what i want to show you right now and why it might be a good alternative to take a look at editing videos on a tablet like the MatePad Pro for example instead of a laptop which most of the time uses its CPU for rendering and not so much the GPU and even if it is using the GPU you have to have a very expensive GPU and a very specific GPU and maybe a specific combination of software and hardware to get the optimum when it comes to encoding the video, rendering the video. And you don't have to have those problems with a tablet in particular because the operating system, the drivers and the software are mostly standardized when it comes to accessing the hardware and accessing the powerful GPU rendering possibilities of your tablet. So this is why I want to show you what is possible with a tablet like the MatePad Pro running the one of the most powerful ARM processors out there, the Kirin 990. And I want to show you what I can do when it comes to simply editing a video on a tablet and how my video workflow looks like when I'm editing some video on my tablet, which software I'm using and of course how fast it is and what I can expect in terms of what special effects I can enter and what cutting features I can enter and what maybe also difficulties I encounter. So let's get started with this by taking a look at the MatePad Pro. So here you can see me um, recording on my Xperia 1. This is the device that I usually do. And I'm recording now the MatePad Pro here, as you can see. And uh, yeah, this little device is the recording device of my choice. Usually the Xperia 1 has good cameras, has um, good software. In this case, I'm using open camera to record this. And I have the option to just simply uh, watch my latest recording here, for example, that I did. And what I want to do is, of course, after I record it, I share it with KD Connect to my MatePad Pro. I choose MatePad Pro and it will start sharing as you can see here it's uploading and uh, then you can see on my MatePad Pro as well it is downloading the video file and this is how I usually then transfer over my video file to my MatePad Pro of course if I have big files then I would use a USB stick or something else uh, with USB on the go eventually there are plenty of video editors under Android and I have a few of them installed here under my video editors folder. I used all of them quick at first, later InShot for several videos and I poked a bit around with VideoShop but finally ended up with KineMaster. When creating a new project in KineMaster you have to set the aspect ratio you want to use and can see the main interface which allows you to add several videos. 
here you can see the timeline which allows you to zoom in and out with an easy pinch uh, gesture. One difficulty I encountered is how do I add a new video track on top of another video? It turns out you need to add a new layer that allows you to add a new media as layer on top of the other. So this leads the video as a layer to be always floating on top of the other video. So first let me find the right point where I want to cut the video so I can create an, one part that is invisible and have another part that is visible. After cutting I can of course click on the layer and simply adjust the opacity for this part. This gets me the effect I was looking for. Adding a title to my video is pretty easy. I just add a text layer and start typing my text. And after that I have various options to easily adjust the text size and position on top of the video with some helper lines to indicate the middle of the video and so on. I have some other effects as well I can add uh, for the text like uh, changing the font. I have the option to set an in animation like pop or various different others that I can set here in the list. As you can see there are a couple of those effects I can choose and uh, they are previewed instantly. Where there is an in, there is also an out. I can choose between the same amount of effects when it comes to the out animation for the text. And I can preview the whole in and out animation to see how it looks like also directly without any issues. There are some other layer options I can work with like overlays and uh, classical stickers which allow me to add some interesting images to my video. Effect layers allow you to add some uh, mosaic or softener filter on top of your video and if you want to blur something out for example this is very handy. On uh, multi-video recordings with audio you might want to mute or volume down one video uh, or the audio part of one video which also is possible by clicking on the video and adjusting the audio volume of that clip. Also there are some templates, graphical effects that I can add to my video if I wish to. There are several categories that feature several effects that I can uh, preview live to choose the one that I really want. So you can see there are lots and lots of effects that you can use and even download uh, and the tablet is able to render them immediately without any big hiccups even if the source material is 4K and not Full HD like in my case here. If I'm done editing, I click on the little door symbol on the top right, which takes me back to my projects and I can then add some title to my project and click on the share button to actually see the rendering options. It allows me to set the resolution and frames per second as well as allowing me to change the bitrate I want to use. You can see it also tells me the approximate um, size of the rendered file, how large the rendered file will be. By default it renders out in H.264 and AAC because it's mostly what ARM chips are optimized for to render and it is a good default I think. After exporting, which usually is twice as fast than real time for Full HD and a bit faster than real time for 4K, of course it all depends on the bit rates that you set. Uh, as you know there's no official Google YouTube client on my MatePad Pro so I choose YouTube Advanced here for uploading the YouTube video and I can enter my title and description and let it upload the video finally. So that's basically all and as you can see the editing videos process on the MatePad Pro is um, first of all possible and when it comes to typical YouTube videos that I produce it's very easy to do. 
There are definitely some limitation when it comes to more than 10 video tracks I would say and audio editing is a bit of limited as well but most of the time it is more than enough for what you will need for a YouTube video. Especially showing effects in real time fluidly on the screen is something that can produce issues on the PC and works really really smooth and nice on the tablet. With tablets like the MatePad Pro it is easily possible nowadays to edit and upload videos without the need of a real PC. And of course it is also possible to just simply use your tablet as a recording device like I'm using it here right now, the front facing camera of the MatePad Pro and I can record in KineMaster directly if I want to, just like if I'm doing a vlog or something like this. So a vlog with a tablet is a bit of weird but you can of course use your uh, smartphone as well like my Mate 30 Pro here and record stuff with, with it and even cut stuff on it because the same powerful processor is inside here. I'm just not using the Mate 30 Pro because it has a smaller screen and it's a bit of cumbersome to cut stuff on the smaller screen but I can, could use a USB Type-C port, uh, attach it to a bigger monitor and then simply cut on a big monitor instead of using my tablet which is in comparison to the Mate 30 Pro of course has the bigger uh, size um, view, <laughs> the bigger size display and allows me to cut things easily. This is everything for this little video. I hope you enjoyed it. What interests me how you cut your video, either on a PC or on a tablet, which applications you are using and on which devices are you cutting your videos and for what purposes are you cutting your videos. I hope you enjoyed the little video and thanks for watching. Like, subscribe and all the shenanigans. Uh, that's all for this little video and until the next time. Bye.